Hey guys, my name is Wes, and you're watching Wes Goes TV, and today I'm reviewing Black Mass. I loved this movie, and it's one of those movies where it's kind of hard to decide what you like about it the most, because there were so many, like, great things. And it may sound basic, but it's like, the things they did the greatest were the things that you need to do in a movie to make a great movie. The acting was spectacular. The direction was superb. The story was phenomenal. It's like... Those are the three things. I mean, you're making a movie. Well, we need good actors. Check. We need it to be well directed. Check. We need a story that people will enjoy. Check. What else do you need? You don't need anything else. But I'll go into further detail because you don't want me to be like, yep, yeah, perfect. That's what it sounds like from that. The acting. I thought Johnny Depp gave his best performance I've seen in maybe 15 years. He was just amazing in this movie. He gave depth to the character. This guy's a monster. You can't forget that. Whitey Bulger is a monster. But in this movie, at a certain point, I'm like, quit calling him Whitey. He isn't like that. His name's Jimmy. Jimmy. Just down the street, Jimmy. He's a good guy. He's just doing what he is, trying to help out his part of town. I didn't think about was a monster. And you're like, what? Because this guy's a horrible person. You're watching this guy kill people. And you're like, yeah, need to be done. That guy betrayed him. That had to be done. That's the way it goes. You don't betray your friends. And then you have Joel Edgerton. This guy's an elite acting talent at this point. There is no doubt about that. A month ago, we are watching him in The Gift, and he's good in that, but he's a completely different person than in this. And I always feel like if you're going to get a great performance out of an actor, it is mostly the actor, but you can have a director that really pulls that out of you. You need that direction. And Scott Cooper giving his best Martin Scorsese impression. I literally pulled my phone out of my pocket at that point and was like, Martin Scorsese directed this, right? No. Who did? Scott Cooper. Keep my eye on this guy, because this guy's good. This guy knows what he's doing. Very impressive. I love that the story could have went in the more average direction. You know, you're seeing him far away. You know you're watching a movie. This movie had you feeling like you were a part of his group. And it allowed you to sympathize with this monster a lot better. Because at a point, like I said, I didn't see him as a monster until I, like the movie was over. And I was like, oh yeah, this guy's a bad person. Like when I thought about it afterwards. But as you're watching it, you feel like you're in with him. I also liked that, going in, I thought it was going to be just about Whitey Bulger. What I ended up getting was a movie that's a good amount about him, but it's also a good amount about Joel Edgerton's character. And you're seeing that side and the side. It's two main characters. They should be co-leads, I would imagine. I'm assuming Joel Edgerton will be put as like a supporting actor, because this is one of those movies where I could easily see him getting a nomination at the, for an Oscar, and Johnny Depp getting a nomination for Best Actor, because they were both amazing in this film. The direction, I don't know if I would say Oscar caliber, but the picture overall, I would say, deserves an Oscar nomination, depending on what else comes out later this year. There were some negatives, though. I thought that you never really got to see the peak. Like, you saw the beginning, and then you saw him rise, and he's rising, and then just pretty abruptly, oh, things are falling apart. And then things start to fall apart, and then the movie kind of, you know, ends. And so it's like... Scorsese does this thing where he gives like 20 minutes. His movies are long, so it allows him to do this. But he gives you like 20 minutes to see him at his peak. You're like, okay, he made it. This is him at his top, at the top of the game. You can't get much better than what he's at right now. You never really get this in this film. You're like, he's rising, he's rising, he's rising. Oh, bad things are happening to him now. Okay. That's it. I also would have liked to see uh, Benedict Cumberbatch in it more. I thought that the relationship between the senator brother and him would have been more interesting to flesh out. We really didn't get to see that very much. So that's a negative. Well, a small one. And then I also felt like the movie was honestly just a little bit short. I mean, it's like an hour and 55 minutes. This movie could have easily been two and a half hours and kept me entertained. I would be surprised, or I guess I should say I wouldn't be surprised, if there is like an extended cut that comes out on Blu-ray when it comes out. Because this movie felt like it left a lot on the table. So that's another negative. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. When one of your biggest negatives is the fact that it wasn't long enough, that says a lot. For me, it'd be a high-end 8, a low-end 9, and I'll probably go back and forth on that until an extended cut comes out, in which then I'll probably hopefully see up a 9. I loved this movie. I thought it was great. I really hope you guys like it. But that's just my opinion on the movie. I want to know yours. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about Black Mass. And while you're down there, make sure to click that like button right here. Subscribe to What's TV right over here to see more of my reviews. Speaking of my reviews, there'll be another link to a review right up there in the corner. Thanks for watching. My name is Wes. Have a great night. Bye.